friends, Stephanie here, Ms. Oh So Crafty. Today is Friday, May 10th, 2019. It's been a while, so welcome to my floss tube video number 67. I've got a lot to share today. It's been around six weeks since I filmed. There was just a lot going on. I had a couple trips I went on in April, and then my son got sick, and there was just a lot, so anyway, I've got whips, I've got finishes, one finish, and I've got tons of haul, so I hope you're into that. If not, well, it'll be towards the end. So how is everyone doing? I hope you're enjoying Mania. We're right here in the thick of it. Um, I guess we're about halfway for those of you who are doing 19 days. I am doing Monogamania. I decided to work on my Celtic Winter piece. Well, actually, I put... Celtic Winter up against Spooky House in a vote for the uh, semi sane Stitchers group. They have this event called Choose My Whip, and Celtic Winter won. So I worked on that for the week beginning of May 1st, and then round two started, so I put Celtic Winter up against Christmas Teddy, and Celtic Winter won again, so I'm continuing on Celtic Winter. And that's good, because my aim is to get a finish on Celtic Winter during Mania, so it's May 10th. Um, there's a ways to go yet. I don't think it'll take another nine days from this point though. We shall see. Maybe I'll be able to finish it this weekend. <laughs> this week has been kind of weird. Not a whole lot of stitchy time, but you know, I've done a little bit here and there. All right, so I guess we'll just get started and I'll go through with the help of my bullet journal. The thing is though, it's been so long since I filmed and I've just worked on multiple things, like the same projects have come up multiple times since then, so I won't exactly be able to tell you well I worked X amount of days or whatever, so, but you probably don't really care too much about that anyway. So when I was filming my vlog, my last video, on the last day, I got a finish. And here it is. Let me grab my board. So this is a realist kit, the Bird of Happiness. The kit comes with this pre-printed Ada cloth, anchor floss, and you count the bird. There's a chart that you follow. It's a count across stitch just on the uh, printed fabric. So, give you a little close up. There's a little bit of back stitching in this pattern, not a whole lot. There's a little bit on the wings and on the bird's head, those wings, and then the some of these swirls down here at the bottom. So I really like how the back stitching was used in this piece, um, sparingly but to great effect. And I made a little modification to the back stitch. So there was back stitch called for in three colors: yellow, red, and blue. And what I did is I switched those out for chronic colors. So the gold and the red is like that's red there, and then that's that's the blue there. It's like a navy blue. So this took me about, I think, under two weeks to stitch. It really didn't take too much. It was a joy to stitch. It wasn't anything too complicated. Probably the worst part was the color chart, and some of the colors on the chart didn't really match the colors of the floss. I guess that's just because the color gradations were so subtle, so they couldn't really do that in printed colors. It would just be confusing. Yeah. But... I loved working on it. I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm looking forward to starting another one of these realist pieces with the printed background. And this lovely lady will be added to my magical menagerie in this room. There's the unicorn, and over there is the dragon. My goal is to have like a whole bunch of magical creatures all around, so that will be fun. <laughs> All right, so that's my finish. And then the other thing I did on my birthday, April 4th, was to start the Stony Creek Spring Bell Pull. And I will insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like. So this is stitched on 18 count and cloth, 100% cotton. And it's actually really nice to stitch on. I like it a lot. So I started with the S block, obviously. <laughs> and 
I worked on it several days since I started. One of the reasons why I started it was because I wanted something small to take with me on the retreat to Arizona, something I could fit on my little lap frame. And this, why not exactly small, it is at least narrow, so it fits on a tiny little scroll frame. I had a little bit of difficulty with it because this big S, it's in the pattern it calls for weeks dye works guacamole which I actually have in my stash I used it for my Lizzie Kate boot club Halloween piece the bell pull and you know it's a fine color but it doesn't say spring to me it's just like too dull of a green in my opinion so I went looking for a new color and I tried a DMC variegated and that didn't really, it, I think it turned out a little bit too dark, so I went looking for a lighter green variegated and I found Water Lilies Budding Leaf Silk Thread at the Attic in Mesa, Arizona. And I am thrilled with that. I think it is perfect, perfect spring green. One of my new favorite flosses. So this first block has a lot of iris flowers and it's going to have bumblebees. There's going to be a bumblebee up there and one over here, I think. So this first block is coming along. I'm going to see if I can finish the first block this month, I think. It's just kind of bugging me as it is. <laughs> Close with no cigar, right? But yeah, it was kind of funny. Sure, it's small enough to fit on my lap stand but this is not an ideal project to work at a retreat it's just so many color changes so <laughs> there was one day when i was working on it and i felt like i made so little progress because i was just like staring at the chart and like chatting and i just couldn't figure out what <laughs> what i was supposed to do so <laughs> yeah <laughs> the retreat was super fun though i'll talk about that later all right so that's my new start And then after that, I had a few days before the retreat, and a few people had asked me to bring my Stony Creek, not Stony Creek, um, Mill Hill, <laughs> Christmas Village to show off at the retreat. And I was willing to do that. I wasn't going to work on it there, but I didn't mind, you know, bringing it just for the brag table or whatever. So I did. And at that point, I had a kind of moderate amount of progress on the post office and I wanted to stitch more of it so it was kind of like well obvious what it was supposed to be <laughs> before I put it on the table so here is the post office um, I worked on it a few days before the retreat. I worked on it after the retreat too. I wanted to put some of the beads on, so I did. I worked through the first bag of beads, which was gold, royal blue, and um, one other color. What was it? This honey colored, honey color, yeah. So. There's three colors of beads on there. My favorite are the, the royal blue ones. I think those are just beautiful. Really pretty. So the post office is coming along. I've got two more bags of beads to go through and I will finish it this month and extend the border snowflakes along too. It is definitely time to finish that guy. <laughs> and so that's my Mill Hill Christmas Village. It's the post office is actually the penultimate building. There's going to be the firehouse next door, so maybe I'll have time this month to start the firehouse too. We shall see. So at the retreat, I worked on the spring bell pull, as I mentioned, and I also worked on my Christmas teddy a little bit. So I've actually worked on the Christmas teddy a lot <laughs> since my last video. It just keeps popping up for challenges and stuff. For example, the Magical Stitches came out with a task to work on your smallest whip, and this whip is indeed my smallest whip. So this is the Christmas Teddy by Joan Elliott from an old issue of 
cross stitch collection magazine, but you can get the pattern directly from Joan Elliott via her blog where she sells patterns, chart packs, and this is definitely coming along. So <laughs> what's left would be like, well, I have to do his nose and his eyes and the inside of his ears and then the hat, the rest of the hat and finish up the window frame. And then there's a lot more backstitching to do. So I did most of the backstitch on the bottom. I did some of the gold metallic in the bottom, like right there. But then I ran out of the spool that I had in my stash. So I did order another spool. There's actually a lot of Krynik called for in this pattern, the gold. And then there's, I think, silver Krynik or something that's used for backstitching. And I have to finish that little bit of his blue shirt there and a little bit more on the uh, that leaf there. This bird is missing his beak. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know how long this will take to finish. I think, like, if I were to give it, like, five days or something, I'm sure that would be enough. But I'll try to finish it probably in, like, July or who knows, maybe sooner, depending on <laughs> how my rotation shakes out. But I did put something smaller in my whip album on magical stitches. Like the the deal was you had to work on your smallest piece and you got bonus points for an FFO. And I was kind of ticked off about that because my smallest piece is this one and this is really not all that small. So I did put like a little ornament in my magical stitches album so I can if they come up with something similar, I can just grab that and stitch it up real quick and FFO it. <laughs> All right, so I guess we can talk about the retreat a little bit. So it was in Arizona. It was hosted by McKenna Stitching and Sequins. Hi, McKenna, if you're watching. It was a fantastic retreat. I had a wonderful time. I met my friend Karen there. We were roommates, and we reunited with them. Um, our table, some of our table mates from the original Foster Retreat in Austin, Lori Organic Granny, and um, Trisha, the left-handed stitcher, and probably some other people I'm forgetting. So it was really, really fun. Um, old friends, new friends, we just had a fantastic time, and the retreat was in a, a great hotel, the uh, Ground Plaza in Chandler, Arizona. It was beautiful, flowers, fountains. Just a gorgeous retreat in a cute little downtown area with plenty of restaurants and stuff within walking distance. And the attic in Mesa was not too far away, just about a 10 minute drive. So I actually flew up to Arizona a day early, rented a car and went to Sedona. This was my first time in Arizona and I just wanted to see more than like a hotel. So <laughs> I did that, excuse me for a sec. So I'm not going to like go real into my <laughs> trip with to Sedona. I'll just tell you briefly what I did was I went on a Jeep tour. I did some hiking. I visited a Mexican restaurant. I did some shopping. And I went, I investigated the whole like vortex phenomena. What? <laughs> so here are some postcards. That is Cathedral and Courthouse Rock. And that is the Red Rock Crossing. That's the coffee pot rock. And this is the, just some landscape that you can see from the, uh, the chapel. So the chapel is like this church that's built like into the side of the cliff. It's pretty cool. I didn't go in it, but I did see it from below. And then at the bottom here is Bell Rock. That's the one that I hiked. I went up to about, I went up to there. And then I did some yoga practice up there. It was nice. Yoga always gives me the feeling of being centered and chill. I did not feel any like specific vortex phenomena, whatever. <laughs> but I think I kind of always feel that, like especially when I practice yoga. I definitely get in the zone, so. It was a great hike. I really enjoyed it. And I did it very early in the morning. It was cold. <laughs> it was so cold in Sedona. It was like below freezing when I woke up that morning. And then it was like in Chandler 
Phoenix, it was like 80 some <laughs> degrees. It was nice, you know, it was nice in um, Phoenix as well, though. Like, it was just, it was beautiful. It was kind of cool in the uh, mornings, and then it would get warm in the afternoon, and then cool in the evenings again. It was just gorgeous. Spring is definitely a wonderful time to visit Arizona. I don't know if I'd want to go in, like, the hot part of summer, but, you know, because <laughs> the sun there is very direct. And then at the retreat, what else did we do? Well, there was a raffle, and I, I won a prize, so that was great. We raised money for a charity, a hospice organization, and I put all my tickets in one basket, and I won a prize. I'll show you that later when I show you my stash. And there was lots of, like, swag, and I received some gifts, and some. I got some stuff from the freebie table, so <laughs> it was really fun. And then I came home. Um, I took the red eye. <laughs> I got home. The next few days, I worked on the um, Christmas Village. I worked on the Spring Bell Pole. I worked on the Christmas Village. I worked on the Christmas Teddy. Uh, one day, I worked on Spooky House. So I'll show that to you now. So this is a pattern by X's and O's, and it's stitched on 32 count Thunderstorm in Belfast by Silk Weaver. And it is old. <laughs> One of my first purchases of hand dyed fabric, at least 10 years old. So here it is. I needed this for the um, extra credit response. Magical Stitches, the last extra credit, the one for March and April. One of the tasks was to stitch 500 or 300 or whatever stitches in black. And this is my piece with the most black, so I did that. I worked on the black in here, and there's some black, and the blended black, like all that is blended black. and. Some of these grays are blended black. And then after I had done as much as, of that as I could, I came up here and I worked the, the moon around so I could do that, that in black. And then I could also backstitch the moon in black. <laughs> so that got me to 500 stitches. And then the other part, then there was, then there, later there was homework that I would use this piece for. So it was 300 stitches on a, a tree. So I did that. I worked. Threads were parked right here at the midline, and I worked up. So right there is 300 stitches. <laughs> and then I worked on the house. The other part of the, the prompt was to stitch on a building or something, so I worked on this part of the house and got like 300 stitches in there, including these little chimneys, these little chimneys, so that was part of it. Yeah, so this is coming along. I did not get the five days in April that I wanted to work on it, but I made a nice little chunk of progress, <laughs> so hopefully I'll get to work on it more, if not this month, then next month. And I'll work on it a lot this fall, because, you know, it's a Halloween piece, and it'll be the perfect thing to stitch in October. <laughs> okay, so that week was also kind of interesting in Magical Stitches. It was year three, week eight, and the idea was to visit... Hogsmeade, visit 10 different shops and choose an appropriate project for each, such 100 stitches on each, and tell a story about it. So I will briefly go through what I did because it's kind of fun. So the first shop was Dervish and Banges, which is like a um, magical artifact shop. So I said, I was looking for an interesting magical artifact. I was so happy to find this enchanted window at Dervish and Bent. Banges, the shop clerk claimed that light passed through the window and would animate whatever it touched and demonstrate it with a sweet teddy bear. So I use this piece because teddy bear sitting in front of the window and he is alive in my mind anyway. <laughs> so for the next uh, task was to visit Gladrag's Wizard Wear. And at there I found a lovely sumptuous blue cape to keep me Warm in the snow, so I worked on this piece, Celtic Winter. 
The third shop was I wanted a little refreshment, so I went to the Hogsmeade Pub. I requested the Viking Vacation Cocktail, which is made with iris liqueur, distilled from the root of iris flowers. So I use this piece for the iris flowers. And then I used my Christmas Village piece because the next shop was the Hogsmeade Rail Station. So I went to the rail station. I was intrigued to see Mill Hill on the board. And the ticket clerk told me that the Muggle Village is decorated for Christmas in a very enchanting way. So I worked on my Christmas Village. <laughs> The fifth shop was a Honeyduke Sweet Shop. And at Honeyduke's, I claim that I found some candy canes. So there are candy canes in this piece. So I worked on him for another 100 stitches. And then the sixth shop was peering through the window of Madam Puttyfoot's tea shop. I spied a cozy couple seated at a small table by the window. They held hands, and the boy presented his date with a cute teddy bear. Yeah, teddy bear. <laughs> Number seven was the Shivenshaft Quill Shop because I needed a new quill for lessons. So I claimed that the Robin quills were beautiful and I wanted a quill made with Robin feathers. <laughs> and number eight was the Shrieking Shack. And I said that I'd heard a rumor that the Shrieking Track was accessed via a tunnel from the Weeping Willow. And Spooky House also has a tree with attitude like the Weeping Willow. So it's kind of hard to tell, but this tree is actually a woman. And like this area right here, uh, hold on. Yeah, this area right here, that's like her, her chest. And you'll see as I get more into the tree. <laughs> and then the ninth shop was Broomsticks Pub. So I went back to my, I like that first Viking vacation cocktail so much, I had to get another one. So I went to my <laughs> spring bell pull again. And I'm not making this up. It's a real thing. Viking vacation cocktail, look it up. <laughs> and then number 10 was... My final stop was Zonko's Joke Shop, and I claim that there I found a watering can that sprays upwards when you tilt it forwards. So that would be like a great joke item, right? So there's actually a watering can in the Spring Bell Pool, so I worked on that. <laughs> All right, so the next week, starting April 21st, I continued on my rotation with Spooky House, and then I had a day off stitching. I had several days off stitching with April, on April. It wasn't the most stitchy month. <laughs> and towards the latter part of that week, I worked on Winnie the Pooh. So I actually wound up giving Winnie the Pooh, I think, four or five days in April. I did not get the 2,000 stitches, but I got like uh, 1,500 or something. So what I did is, I did all the over one sections that were left. So uh, Rue, right there in his mother's little pocket. And the trumpet over here. And then this, which I could not figure out for the life of me what it was. I had to look at the original artwork. So what it is actually, it's two items. The, the brown thing is like an overturned stool and then behind it is a toy train and the pattern actually calls for back stitching this drum here but not the trumpet or these items but i think i need to back stitch all of them because it'll look funny just to have the drum back stitch and the other things not and maybe with a little back stitch i can kind of delineate these things better make them look like what they're supposed to be i don't know <laughs> we shall see and then i worked Came over here to the final column, and I started working up from the bottom. I worked up to there. This is very close to finish now. Basically, all I have to do is finish these stitches, which is just like a couple hundred, and then I've got to do the all the stitches with blending filament. So that would be those stitches in there, and those stitches up there. 
and I need to fill in a few ninja stitches over there, and then I have to do all the back stitching on the fourth page. So that would be like Christopher Robin, Kanga, the badger, I think it is down here, or the gopher, I can't remember. And then there's back stitching on the door, and maybe oh yeah, there's a bunch of French knots to do all over here and here and there. So I think it's probably like another 1,500 stitches all, all together. And I can do that this month. <laughs> I really want to get it finished this month. This would make it like a two year project. So I'm gonna try to work on it, I guess after I finish Celtic Winter. All right, so that takes us up to April 28th. So then we were getting really getting down to the wire at the end of April, and I had to finish my April, March, April extra credit. So I had one of the tasks I was using um, Fantasy Triptych 4, and I had like 300 and some stitches towards it, so I only needed another 150, and I managed to do that in an evening. So what I did basically was I just worked with the park threads and did 150 stitches roughly with them. So working into this next column here. There's a long way to go in this piece. I haven't really worked on it that much. It keeps getting a short shift because I don't um, plan to finish it this year. So yeah, whatever. I'll finish it one of these days eventually. And then I worked on Christmas Teddy. It was a short week. Oh yeah, that was the magical stitches prompt to work on the smallest um, item in your whip album, and that was my smallest item. So then May 1st started. Yay, mania! So as I mentioned earlier, I decided to do monogamania with Celtic Winter. So I started working on Celtic Winter on May 1st. I've worked on it every day since then, except for one. And this is stitched on pearl gray cashel, 28 count. Excuse all the park threads. It's kind of like they actively worked on at the moment. <laughs> so here is my progress on Celtic winter. So this is my own color conversion. The cape was charted by Natalie G, and I chose my own colors for it. I did use Natalie's colors for the dress, though. I chose my own colors for the medallions and all this business up here. And when I started stitching, well, when I stitched this little line above her head, that was the first thing I had to frog. And then I had to frog part of the N and part of the most of the T of winter and then I had to frog a lot out of these um, motifs <laughs> just because the colors were too like indistinct against the fabric or whatever so just because they worked in her dress like you know within like this whole business doesn't mean that they would um, show up well like on their own if it's just like a single row of stitches or whatever so With May 1st, the Magical Stitches, the Quidditch tournament started, so it's basically just like stitch as much as you could and rack up points for your team. So this project stitches pretty quickly, although now it's not stitching as quickly as it did just because it's more fussy with the medallions and the crinic and the fluff, fluffy business. <laughs> so I worked it up to here. The top corner and then I started frogging so <laughs> that took me up through the the second Quidditch match which ended May 6. I actually worked on Christmas Teddy one of those days in the second Quidditch match. I got up at three o'clock in the morning which was when the Quidditch match started on the East Coast and did tried to do a thousand stitches on my Christmas Teddy. I did not win the snitch. Um, someone else did by stitching like a single collar and she was in a different time zone where it was a more reasonable hour. So 
I, what I learned about myself was 3 a.m. is not my time. <laughs> so it's either too early or too late. I won't be doing anything like that again. It was just silly. <laughs> but it was great to get that uh, Progress on Christmas Teddy. I actually wound up, I did the thousand stitches for his face, and then later that evening I, I did some more just to finish the rest of those colors for his ears. So I got like 1,200 on that project in one day. That was kind of awesome. So for Celtic Winter, I got like 2,200, I think, for the first Quidditch match. And then for the second match, I got like... 1800 or something and then after the quidditch match was over i started to frog as i mentioned <laughs> so a lot of frogging <laughs> and then i put it back on the frame started at the bottom so i before i had started adding in this high luster silver metallic but i hadn't been able to finish the silver metallic if in the um trim of the cape so I did that and then you're supposed to fill in this business with whisper thread. So I went in my stash trying to find my whisper thread. I could not find it. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Well, this fuzzy thread in there is actually yarn. <laughs> I had some yarn left over in my last knitting project and it was a wool cashmere blend of yarn. It was like a light sport weight, three plies and they were rather loosely plied. So. It was like two white plies and one gray ply. So I pulled out a white ply and tried cross stitching with it and it worked. It was, it's roughly the thickness of like two strands of DMC floss, maybe a little bit thicker, but I love, I love it. It's delicate to work with, not quite as delicate as Whisper though. And it gives that nice fluffy furry effect. <laughs> And then I did all the metallics over here in the little medallions. And then I did the, had to restitch some of these medallions, just changing up some of the colors. And then I added the um, metallics. So you can see, like, this is how much I frogged out of the medallions. So I'll have to finish that one, of course. And then I started working on the the muff that she has on her hand. So that is actually that same fiber, the the yarn, the wool cashmere yarn, <laughs> and that's blended with DMC floss. So that one is blended with the B5200 floss. And then there's a whole bunch of other colors that need to go in this area, just like a few stitches of different colors, like a lot of the colors that are used in the dress or the trim or whatever. So this part is kind of fiddly, just, just have to like fill in all these. So basically what I'm trying to do is work this up from the bottom, getting it ready for beading. So what I need to do next is finish off this muff and clean up all the threads I have parked, fill in whatever's missing and whatever gray flosses. And then I'll move the scroll frame and I'll start working on her, <clears throat> her head and this um, medallion over here and then the, the winter. I decided I'm gonna use 762, 762 for those colors. So it'll be a little bit more of a transition, but at least it'll show up. Because I, at first I'd done 415, which was lovely, but it disappeared into the fabric. So <laughs> 762 is actually the one that I'm using, like this one, the, the clover shape. That's 762. So hopefully that'll show up better. And then there's a lot of metallics to do all around these letters and whatnot. And then there's metallics up here and these band so I think there's another band I have to do and then of course I need to finish the, the border. I ended my backstitch line there so I have to backstitch up there. <laughs> so it's coming along. I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with the, the fuzzy stuff. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. I mean Basically, it was just really nice to use the material from my stash, and 
not have to buy anything. Because <laughs> so I was all ready to order more Whisper from 123 or something, but then I was like, I just, I don't like working with Whisper, and I didn't want to spend money on it. So, <laughs> I'm really glad I tried this fiber from the, uh, the yarn. And I guess wool and cashmere are more sturdy than mohair, which is what the Whisper thread is made out of, so that's nice. It still gets gives it that nice sort of fluffy um, appearance. I might actually try brushing this when I'm done with it the same way you would with Whisper. I don't know. That might make it fluff up a little bit more. But it's already pretty fluffy. And I need to finish her, her face and everything, so... Yeah, I've not really just did a little bit of her face. I have to do her hair. I have to work out the colors for her hair. I think I'm going to make her like a blonde or something. Just because that'll show up really nicely against the fabric and against her blue cape. And then it will be time to bead. I can't wait to bead this. I'm so excited to bead it. I bought some beads to do it. And I will show you those beads. So I guess that's it for my stitching projects. Do you want to see my stash now? I guess I'll just show you the, the beads. It's kind of a, a nice segue into that. So I placed an order with Dream of Needlecraft Corner and I, some of the beads I have in my stash, but I got these 479 and 3062. Those are blue. Oh, the light is just that's better. And then these. These are Magnifica. I think they're called Silver Fox or something. So I also got this thread. This is actually the Krynic that I'm using in Celtic Winter 001 HL. Krynic. And then I ordered 032. I need that for my Christmas village. That's the one I use for the snowflakes, and I think I'm all out. And I got this one, 25. I need this for Christmas teddy. And then I got two of 28. I need those for Christmas teddy. And this was a gift for the uh, birthday order from Dreama. Some John James 28s which is great because that's what I like to use, 20, size 28 needles. <laughs> Another part of the gift was this journal here. It's very pretty. Hardback notebook. I haven't opened it up yet. I don't really need another journal at the moment. I've got my little Fujo. Anyway, so I got this pattern. This is the Halloween Fairies by Waxing Moon. It's actually two charts in there. I saw this one as a model at Keepsakes in Cincinnati, and it was gorgeous, so I'm really looking forward to stitching that one of these days. And I got this pattern, X's and O's, Luck of the Irish. I think that is just so cool. I love that. The shamrock shape and all the the patterns, I think it'll be really interesting to stitch because each pattern is different and I love how it says luck of the Irish, so I'm looking forward to stitching that as well. And then, sorry, the light is weird. I got this. It is the pin of DMC 12. Here it is. All the colors, the new colors, aren't they pretty? Very pretty. Looking forward to using those. Not quite sure, exactly sure what for yet, but I'll figure it out. So that was my birthday haul, and it was considerable, but I got a heck of a lot more stuff at the retreat, so. This was one of the items that I received as a gift. This was, it's um, Erie Lugana, size 28. And this was from Andrea, Misbehave and Stitches on uh, Insta. It was great to meet her. 
and she was like giving out fabric that she didn't want anymore. So I snapped up that piece. And then here is my raffle prize. So this is the Scary Apothecary Bitter Brew Broomstick Fuel and Bat Bomb. And along with the, the prize came all these Krynic threads. <laughs> Tons of Krynic! So I was like overjoyed to uh, win this. It was Quite um, a wonderful prize. <laughs> I mean, I bought twenty dollars worth of uh, raffle tickets, and this stuff is worth a lot more than that. So, like it, over twice that. So <laughs> I made out ahead. So that was my raffle prize. And then, oh, here's something. This is a bit of um, beeswax or something, and it. Cactus shape. I don't use beeswax though. So. Although, never seen ever right. I might someday. This was a gift from my roomie. This is Lakeside Sugar Ginger. It's a 30 by 13 cut, which is kind of an interesting shape. I might be able to use this for the Halloween fairies dancing chart. Um, we shall see. It was a lovely gift. And then that, she actually got that at the attic. So I got some stuff for myself at the attic. <laughs> I, I found this chart. This is Spooktown by Debbie Mom Mel Hill. So this is thoroughly blinged out with tons and tons of beads. I think that is really cute. Great Halloween thing for kids, not too scary. And the character charts are also included. So you could do like ornaments or whatever. Neat, huh? Another thing I got there is the long dog crossword pattern. This is my first long dog, and I'm thinking about using the DMC A12 thread for this one. Maybe. I don't know. I need a plan. I'm not going to do it in black and white like it's done. I definitely want color in there. I'm just not sure which colors or how I should do the colors, but I'll figure it out one of these days. <laughs> Well, this I got from my friend. This is Gentle Art Tiger Lily. I need to put that in the mail for her. Let's see. This was a freebie that Karen found for me on the freebie table. So it's actually a full kit. Mickey and the gang. With the floss. And it looks like probably 14 count Ada. Yeah, 14 count Ada. It's by Leisure Arts. And it has the Disney... Copyright Disney on it. Mickey Unlimited. I think that's really cute. I don't know if I've mentioned, but we're actually going back to Disney this year in uh, December. We have to go when well, my son is young. <laughs> he loves it so much, you know. This was some of my swag from the retreat, just like a little project bag or whatever. And here's something I found at the shop, the attic. So this is Medieval Garden, designed by Patricia Anderley, and it's called, it's from the Counted Illumination series. It's part of a series, including the Goblin Market, the Knight Errant, and the Galleon and Sea Monsters. So I actually picked up the Galleon, that's this one here. She didn't, they didn't have the Goblin Market. I probably would have gotten the Goblin Market if I'd seen it. They did have the night one, but I just wasn't all that crazy about the night one. I might feel differently after I stitch these and want to pick up the night. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. That was, that was it for my haul. So it was really a, a wonderful month of haul, that's for sure. <laughs> all right. So I just want to um, talk a little bit about my my plans for the rest of uh, May. So I'm going to continue on Celtic Winter this week and see if I can get her finished as soon as possible. <laughs> Hopefully this weekend or maybe like the middle of next week. We'll see how long it takes. And then for the rest of May, 
Uh, my goals are to finish the Mill Hall Post Office and to finish Winnie the Pooh. And I also want to work on my spring bell pull a little bit and get that uh, S block finished up. So for the spring bell pull, I'm using that for a, um, my project in the Stitchy Quest to Destroy the One Ring. I <laughs> think that's the name of the group. It's a new Facebook group that was started by Kate. And um, it's a lot of fun. So it's all like based around Lord of the Rings and there's reading challenges and stitching challenges. So and the stitching challenges, for the most part, they're time-based. They're, they're not stitch count. So it's the challenges for like stitch for two hours or stitch for three hours. It's not like stitch 500 stitches or whatever. So it's just like the time rather than the stitch count, which is kind of nice, you know, just change the pace. And then, June will start. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be back to uh, give you another update before the end of May. Um, I'll probably want to show off Celtic winter at the very minimum. All right. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone who comments and gives me the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It was so great to meet some of you in uh, Austin and I'm looking forward to seeing more floss tubers at Arlene's retreat in August in New Jersey and not just floss tubers but other people who don't floss tube fans or whatever like I, it's always nice to meet new people and you know chat and stuff so <laughs> yeah I love it when you know people introduce themselves at retreats and you know getting to know new people and everything I don't always like wander around the room so much I just feel a little awkward doing that but I'm always happy to like chat with somebody if you want to like come up and say hi you know <laughs> I would love to uh to meet you. So happy stitching everyone and uh, take care. Be well. Ta-ta.